Hey everyone, thanks for watching again. The if formula is one of those things that if you learn how to use it properly will open up a whole new world for you in Excel. In this video, I'll go over the basics and a few examples of the advanced if functions. First, I'll teach you the basic true false version. Then I'll get into the if function with multiple criteria, otherwise known as the ifs formula. After that, I'll teach you how to use the if and function to build formulas based on not just one date, but a date range. And if you stay to the end, I'll give you a bonus lesson on the if formula that is really underutilized for how much power it has. We have a lot to cover in this video, so let's dig in. All right, let's start with the most basic of the if formula. It essentially acts as an if that, then this function. Or in other words, if what I'm asking is true, then Excel will put one value in the selected cell. And if what I'm asking is not true, then Excel will put a different value in the selected cell. This example should clear it up for you. I have here a list of wedding guests. I want to determine the total cost of the meal based on whether the guests ordered steak or chicken. The plate of chicken costs $15, whereas the steak plate costs $20. I could go down column C and just type the price line by line, but I'm all about working smarter, not harder. So there's a formula for that. In cell C2, I'm going to type the equals if, and then an opening parentheses. Excel is asking for the logical test now. This is where you put the criteria. So I'm going to select B2, and then type the equal sign. Now in quotations on either side, I'm going to type chicken, and then a comma to get to the next rule in the formula. Excel is now asking me what value I want to add to C2 if B2 does in fact say chicken. Since the chicken plate costs $15, I'm going to type 15. Now when I add a comma, Excel is asking me what value I want to add to C2 if B2 does not say chicken. Since I only have chicken and steak as options, I'm going to put 20, since steak is $20. Now I can close the equation with a closing parentheses and hit enter. I can autofill the row by double clicking the little box in the bottom right hand corner of the cell. Not bad. Looks like it's going to cost us just over $1,700 to feed everybody. The next example I'm going to show you is a little bit more complicated, but still really easy for you to get the hang of, trust me. I'm going to show you how to use the IF formula based on multiple criteria. We're going to use the same data as we used in the last example, but we're going to add another layer. Kids under the age of two get to eat for free in this wedding. So in D2, instead of typing equals IF, I'm going to add an S to that and type equals IFS with an opening parentheses. Now I'm going to tell Excel to look at C2 and determine if the answer is yes to whether or not the guest is under two years old. So I'll select C2 and then type equals, then opening quote, then yes, then closing quote, and a comma. Excel now asks for what the value should be if the answer is true. I'm going to put zero because kids under two are free. Now I want to have Excel determine the answer to the question, is the meal chicken, yes or no? So I'll select B2, then an equal sign, then an opening quote, then chicken, then a closing quote, then a comma. If B2 is chicken, then I want the value in D2 to be 15, since chicken is $15. Now another comma. You'll notice that the ifs function isn't asking what to put if the value is false. That means you have to tell it what value to add to D2 if B2 says steak. So I'll select B2, and then type another equal sign, and then add an opening quote, then type steak, then a closing quote and a comma. If it says steak, I want the value in D2 to be 20 since steak is $20. Now I can close this equation with a closing parentheses and hit enter and autofill just like before. Now this is important. When using the ifs formula, Excel is looking at multiple criteria in the order that you add it to the formula. If it looks at the first criteria in your formula and realizes that it is in fact true, the formula will end there. So it is important to add the criteria to the equation in the order that you want Excel to look at it. I'll show you what I mean in E2. Instead of starting the equation by having Excel look at whether or not the guest is under two years old, I'm going to have it look at whether or not the meal is chicken or steak. So is the meal chicken? If so, $15. Is the meal steak? If so, $20. Is the guest under two years old? If so, then zero dollars. Now, when I close the equation, you can see that the value is $15, even though the guest is under two years old. Since the first rule in the equation is true, Excel didn't move on to the next rule. So it's important to have that in the right order. All right, so I have two more examples to go over. So stick with me. I promise it will be worth your time, since the next two are probably the most powerful and useful. 
I do want to take about nine seconds to give you a heads up on a couple of things. If you are enjoying this video, or if at the end of the video you decide you've learned something, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. Doing so will give you an update anytime I post a new video. Also, I'd really appreciate it if you'd let me know you liked the video by giving me a thumbs up and sharing it. Also, in the comment section, let me know how you found my channel. Alright, let's dig into the next example. I'm going to teach you how to set up an if formula to add a value to a cell based on whether or not the date criteria in column A is within the date range listed over in these cells. Let's pretend that I have a website where I'm selling different online courses. In column A, the date of the purchase is listed. In column B, the name of the course. In column C, the customer name. And column D lists the amount charged for the specific course. During the month of February, I ran a special. For each course purchased, I donated 10% of profits to a local organization. Now, I need to determine how much the total donation is going to be since February is over. I'll start the formula in column E by typing equals if and an opening parentheses. Now I'm going to type the word and with another opening parentheses. The Excel and function is a logical function used to require more than one condition at the same time and returns either true or false. After the opening parentheses, Excel is asking what the first logic is. I'm going to say that I need A2 to be greater than or equal to G1, which is February 1st. I need to hit F4 here to ensure that the first date in the date range stays absolute. Now, when I hit comma, Excel asks for the second logic in the AND statement. I'm going to say that I also need A2 to be less than or equal to H1, which is February 29th. I also need to hit F4 here to ensure that the second date in the date range stays absolute. I'll close the AND portion of the equation off with a closing parentheses and then add a comma to get to the next rule in the IF statement. Excel is now asking what value I want to add if both of the AND statements are true. Instead of putting text and quotations like I did in the previous two examples, I'm going to actually build a SUM formula as the response. So I'll type SUM, then an opening parentheses. Now I'm going to select D2, which is the total price, and I'm going to multiply it by 0.1, or 10%. Now I'll close the SUM formula with a closing parentheses and add a comma to get to the final rule in the IF statement. It's now asking me what to put if both statements in the AND function are false. I'm going to put 0 as the value, since if the dates aren't in February, I won't be donating anything. Now I can close the IF statement and the entire formula with a closing parentheses and hit ENTER. Finally, I can autofill and it should give me the total in G4. The final example I'm going to show you is how to work with blanks in the IF formula. I'm working with similar data that I worked with in the first two examples. But in this example, I am still waiting on a few of the guests to decide what meal they would like. In order to budget the best I can, I want to find the average cost of the meal plans that I do have. Watch what happens when I add the IFS statement that we've used before. If B2 equals chicken, then $15. If B2 equals steak, then $20. Now I'll autofill. You'll notice that the rows that don't yet have a meal selection are producing the NA error in the price column, and that is messing up my average. I could technically fix this issue by adding an isError function to the average formula up here, but I'm going to show you another way. Instead, I'm going to add another logic in C2 that says if column B is blank, leave column C blank as well. So I'll add that by going to the end of the formula and adding a comma. Then I'll select B2 and then add an equal sign. Now I'll add two quotation marks, which means nothing in Excel. Next I'm going to add a comma and say that if column B is blank, then column C should be blank too. Now I can close the parentheses and hit enter. When I autofill it solves two problems. I no longer have the mess of the NA errors and the average equation also works up here. I'm hoping that by now you can tell the IF formula in Microsoft Excel is a very powerful function. If you learned anything, let me know in the comment section below. See you next week with a new video. Hey guys, how you doing? If you learned something from this video, you're going to want to do a couple things. First, you're going to want to hit that subscribe button and the bell notification. If you do that, you're going to be the first one to get notified when I post a new video, which is about once a week. I'd also ask that you hit that like button and the share button, and then tell me what you learned in the comment section. If you do all of those things, this video is actually going to get out there for more people to see and to learn from. Thanks guys, I'll see you next time.